We, of course, start with breaking decision 2024 news tonight. Alabama's voice is heard. The polls are closed and your votes are being counted. You are deciding who will headline the November election and ultimately lead Alabama from the local to the federal level. We begin with the newly redrawn District 2, the congressional district in Alabama that now runs from Georgia across the center of the state down into Mobile. There are a lot of people fighting for this seat on both sides of the aisle. 11 Democrats. Democrats. So far, no clear winner. We do have a couple of front runners. Shamari figures, as you see, and Anthony Daniels have the most votes so far, setting up a possible, possible runoff between those two. Napoleon Bracey and Marika Coleman are not far behind. And of course, there are still more votes to be counted. Now, looking more unlikely to end in a runoff is the Republican race for House District 2. Candidates Phyllis Harvey Hall, or I should say the remaining candidates in District 2, the remaining Democratic candidates who you see on your screen here. We'll round out those Democrats with one more page of full screens. There you go. For more on the race, we go live to WSFA 12 News reporter Monet Stevens. She's at the Daniels campaign right now. And how are things looking there tonight, uh, Monet? Well, yes, you know, it's been neck and neck between Daniels and Figures all night. And, you know, right now I have joining next to me is Anthony Daniels. And so, Anthony, talk to me. This race has been very close all night. Were you expecting the outcome to be like this? Well, certainly you always run a race to, to be the top vote getter. But unfortunately, this, you know, this is the way it, it, it ended. And so what we're looking at right now is we're very optimistic about the future in this race, about the runoff, uh, because we were spent, outspent by a third party, by $2, two million dollars were spent against us in this race. And so if you're adding in what the candidate raised, you're about, you're over $2 million that's been spent against me in this race, where I've only, I raised almost $400,000. And so I'm very optimistic about the, run, uh, about the runoff uh, and the opportunity to be able to, to really talk, talk to the voters a little bit more about my deliverables instead of you know outside organizations uh, pouring millions of dollars into this race trying to buy the second congressional district you know if this race were to go into a runoff how would you want to garner more support um, from people who are still kind of on the fence on who they want to vote for I think at the end of the day, when you start debating and it's one-on-one -on -one and it's not a large field, you get an opportunity to, to judge the candidates based upon substance. But we've seen this play out before. Uh, congressional re uh, district a couple years ago, uh, we saw the highest vote getter losing in the runoff. And so they got the highest vote in the primary, but they end up losing in the runoff. And so the runoff is where the clock starts over. It's, it's a tip-off. Like a basketball game, it's a tip-off. And so everyone's starting with 0-0. Zero, zero. And so at that particular time, you got to play your game. And, and right now, we're looking forward to, to getting into the runoff and having an opportunity to communicate with the voters about the things that we've been able to deliver for this district and for this state. And so you and tonight you've had a lot of support from people out in the communities of Montgomery and throughout this entire district. And also you had, uh, you know, some of your um, colleagues support you as well. What do you want to say to them? Well, thank, I want to first thank all of our, my supporters that are out there. Everyone that supported me in this race, uh, whether it's uh, door knocking, whether it's uh, stuffing envelopes, or whether it's encouraging words. Uh, I certainly want to thank the voters for their support and their confidence in me. And so I want to continue on in the runoff and know that, hey, I need your support again on April 16th. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Representative Daniels. And of course, we, the race is still too close to call at this point. But of course, if they were to go into the runoff, Daniels would be one of those front runners, Val. All right. Thanks a lot, Monet. Well, on the Republican side, eight candidates are fighting for the one nomination, and it's another close race at the top. Yep, Dick Brubaker has been leading most of the night, and he continues to lead this evening with an estimated 70 percent of the votes cast. He's got 42 percent, followed by Caroline Dobson's 27 percent and Greg Albritton's 23 percent. So it's still unclear here if there will be a runoff, and it's still unclear which two candidates will be on that runoff. Following up the pack, Belinda Thomas, Stacey Shepperson, and Carla Dupriest. For more on the race, we go live to the Brubaker campaign with WSFA 12 News anchor Sally Pitt. Sally.
Yeah, they feel really great here at the Brew Baker Camp right now. I'm joined by State Representative Reed Ingram, who is the owner of Sweet Creek Farm Market, where Dick Brew Baker chose to hold his watch party tonight. You're not only the owner of this place, you're a big supporter of Dick Brew Baker's. I, I understand that you were one of the first people he spoke to when considering running for this race. Why did you encourage him to get in it? Well, I tell you, he's done a good job as a senator, and he's always been solid. Anything he tells you he'll do, he's always done. And he's always been there for Montgomery County. And he's always been for, there for his district. And I don't know, you know, it's going to be hard to call him, instead of senator, it's going to be hard to call him, get used to calling him congressman. But he's, he'll do a great job. And I was glad to support him. I think what's interesting is you hold a seat that was once held by Dick Brubaker right. several years ago That's in that right. 75th district here in Alabama in the House of Representatives. And I hope I'm doing a very good job. I mean, you know, it's a big shoes to fill, you know. But Senator Brubaker has done a great job with the House. He's done a good job with the Senate. And he's got a proven record. And it was just a no-brainer to be able to support somebody like that as solid as he is. Why do you think he's the right fit for Washington right now? Well, I think, you know, he's he sold his dealership. He's in a retired mode. He's, his kids are older. And uh, most of them are married off. And um, I think he's got the time to spend, you know, doing the right thing for the country and for the state. He mentioned his family. Most of his children oh, yeah. are here. All of his grandchildren are here. It's 10 o'clock on a Tuesday night where they could be off doing other things. But they're here supporting him. What does that say that his family He's is family. here? He is family oriented. And that's what we are here in, in Alabama. I mean, it's a Bible Belt. And we're all about families. And he's just set a good example all the way through his career and all the way through his political career. He's just a good man and a good, solid man, and he'll do a good job. Hey, Representative Reading Room, thank you so much, and we appreciate you hosting us here tonight yeah. as well. Yeah. So they are feeling good. I, I heard Dick Brubaker say just a minute ago he feels really good about the numbers. The question is, does he avoid a runoff, or is he headed against one of his Republican counterparts? All right, Mark thanks about. so much, Sally. Caroline Dobson is in second place for that Republican nomination for the congressional second uh, to race. And Julia Avent is at her headquarters right now. And have you had a chance to talk to her tonight? I have, Val, and she's right next to me right now with me, Caroline Dobson. Spirits have been high. It's been ever-changing, but you are right neck and neck with Brew Baker. How are you staying positive? Uh, well, I, you know, just this whole experience has been one of gratitude. Um, I am so grateful to have had the opportunity to meet so many amazing people throughout the 13 counties of this district. I've learned so much about this district, and um, I'm, again, just, just very thankful to be here tonight, surrounded with friends and family. Um, and I think it's really exciting that the, the people of Alabama, you know, want um, a young conservative mother. Um, you know, as of four months ago, I was uh, a lawyer, an ag producer, a wife, a mother. I was not a public figure. I'm not a career politician. And I, I think it's clear that people in Alabama want a change. Um, they want they don't want more of the same old, same old. They want someone who's going to work with President Trump, um, someone who is going to fight for Alabama families, someone who's not going to raise our taxes, who's going to secure our borders, support our military, and restore faith in this country. And so I'm, I'm really encouraged by the results that have come in so far. And uh, again, just just grateful to have had this opportunity. So you talked a little bit about what you're going to do and what you're going to bring to the table. Who would you like to thank for you know getting you here? Oh, absolutely. Um, my family, my, my husband Bobby, my parents, um, my daughters, because they're my motivation. And I have the most amazing team. Um, uh, Paul Shashi, Drew Dixon, Warren Huffman. Um, they have been truly incredible because, it, again, as of you know, a little over four months ago, I was just a wife working wife and mother and so um, again it shows that um, you know just an ordinary citizen can step up and try to make a change um, if they've got a good team behind them so I'm, I'm very grateful um, to have some folks with integrity that are working with me a strong woman thank you so much for sharing thank that you. and you know we're still watching those polls That's as right. they are ever changing the night is not over back to you guys all right. Thanks so much, Julia. We're also watching District 1. That district also recently redrawn. It now covers basically the very southernmost portion of the state. It runs from Mobile and Baldwin counties all the way over to the Wiregrass counties. The race also featured two incumbent congressmen. Jerry Carl is currently in the District 1 seat. Barry Moore is currently in the District 2 seat. But he opted to switch districts when the lines were redrawn. And here's a look at the numbers right now. Barry Moore is in the 
lead with 53% of the vote, Jerry Carl with 47% of the vote, and that's with about an estimate 64% of the boxes counted. The winner will face Democrat Tom Holmes, who ran tonight unopposed. Another early night for Alabama Congressman Mike Rogers. He's already been called the winner of the third congressional district, a seat that he's held ever since 2002. He's winning handily and has won that seat with 81% of the vote. There is no Democrat running in this race. And another win for Republican Congressman Gary Palmer of District 6. That district was redrawn to include Elmore and Otaga counties. The longtime incumbent defeated Ken McFeeters and Garrick Wilkins for the Republican nomination for District 6. Palmer will face Democrat Elizabeth Anderson in the general election. And Alabama Democrat Terry Sewell of, Dist of District 7 was also on the ballot tonight and as well. And she also won handily. Let's take a look at that information. It was a landslide against Christopher Davis. Sewell sent out a video thanking those who voted for her earlier this evening and says she looks forward to the general election. While we celebrate our victory tonight, we know that our fight is not over. There's too much at stake to be on the sidelines. I look forward to us working together as we march towards November and victory. Sewell will face Republican Robin Littiger in the general election. Christian Horn was also on the ballot, but withdrew from the race last month. At last check, Horn actually did receive more votes, so we're still unclear what will happen next. Let's look at another big race, turning now to the top races on just about everyone's ballot, and that's the presidential race. It was an easy night for the front runner. Within the first hour, the Alabama Republican primary was called for former President Donald Trump. The closest competitor was Nikki Haley, but was still at a distant second. And no sweat for the president either. Joe Biden, the winner of Alabama's Democratic primary, just minutes after the polls closed. Alabama is in search of a new Supreme Court chief justice. That's because the current chief justice, Tom Parker, is retiring. With the seat up for grabs, two Republicans were fighting it out for the nomination, Sarah Stewart and Brian Taylor. The race has been called for Stewart. Someone spent, she has spent 13 years as a circuit judge in Mobile. Gray Television caught up with Stewart in Mobile after her win tonight to get a reaction. I really appreciate the trust of the Alabama people. We uh, have a great opportunity to do some great things for the court system and for Alabama. And, um, you know, I ran on a campaign of reestablishing trustworthiness in the court system, and I feel really good that the people reacted to that and responded to that. Now, Stewart will face Democrat Greg Griffin. He is running unopposed on the Democratic ballot. He, too, a judge currently here in Montgomery County. Now to the race that was on every ballot as well, Republican and Democrat alike. We're talking about a statewide proposed amendment, which was referred to on your ballot as Amendment 1. This amendment would allow the legislature to consider proposed local laws or constitutional amendments before approving budgets. Now, right now, lawmakers must pass a BIR if they want to talk laws ahead of the budgets, which happens at most regular sessions. So it looks like a majority of Alabamians uh, voted no, but it is still very, very close, that race for Amendment 1. Another big proposal on the ballot for Montgomery County voters was a renewal of a local property tax. And this is a tax renewal, so no new tax for Montgomery County residents. In fact, it's been in place for decades, and as you can see, it overwhelmingly passed with 58% uh, of folks voting for that. That is good news for the local school systems in our county. WSFA 12 News reporter Simon Schusler is joining us live with more on the latest reaction to this victory. Simon. Mark, both Pike Road and Montgomery Public School officials, they were anxiously waiting tonight's result. That's because if this bill passed, then it would allocate about $11 million a year to Montgomery Public Schools and just over a million to Pike Road Schools. Now, Pike Road Superintendent Dr. Keith Langford and Montgomery Mayor Stephen Reed both released statements on the renewal. Langford saying in part, quote, I am ecstatic. I am so proud it passed. We appreciate the town of Pike Road and the citizens of Montgomery County for putting our kids first. Now, Mayor Reed also showed his support to voters who passed the renewal, saying, Today, Montgomery voters once again sent a strong message that we believe in a well-funded, high-quality public school system. Here's what MPS Superintendent Dr. Melvin Brown had to say. 
I'm thrilled for what we've done, what, what our community's done. I want to thank our community immensely for what has happened tonight, thanking our Board of Education for their advocacy and the work they do to push this work, our city and county officials, the mayor's office, everybody who's been part of this effort to make sure we're able to get our kids the types of things they're supposed to have because, again, this was a renewal. These are things our kids should have. After tonight, this tax renewal will not be on the ballot for another 30 years. It's a big win for the long-term funding of both school districts. Val, Mark. All right. Thanks a lot, Simon. Just in, the Alabama Democratic nomination for District 2 has been decided. It will be a runoff. We can report tonight that within just the last few minutes, it was confirmed Shamari Figures and Anthony Daniels are the two top get voters, meaning that they will meet again in six months for a runoff in this race. All right, let's talk about the State Board of Education. District 3 will have a new representative. Stephanie Bell chose not to run again after about 30 years in the seat. You can see Kelly Mooney with 47 percent of the vote and Charlotte Meadows with a close with a distant 27 percent and Ann Eubanks 14 percent, Melissa Snowden with 12 percent. No Democrat qualified to run in that race. A similar situation for State School Board District 7. Belinda McCray did not seek, see a, seek re election and there are three candidates who wanted to replace her. Alan Long appears to be walking away with this one with 69 percent of the vote over Doug Backus and Oscar Mann. By the Four. way, as far as Democratic challengers in that race, there are none. For president of the Public Service Commission, it's incumbent Twinkle Kavanaugh versus Robert McCollum. This role has a big say in the prices of your utilities. And you can see that Kavanaugh won with 61 percent of the vote, Robert McCollum with only 39 percent. There is no Democrat running in that race. For the 15th Judicial Circuit, place six, two Democrats are running. Monet Gaines and Greg Griffin. Monet Gaines has been determined the winner of that judgeship with 70 percent of the vote. In the 17th Judicial Circuit Place 1, two Democrats are running, Gregory Griggers and Robert Lee Sr. The numbers there, 72 percent for Gregory Griggers and Robert Lee Sr., 28 percent. And in the 19th Judicial Circuit Place 4, three Republicans, D.D. Calhoun, Jacqueline Thomson, Tomlinson and Nicole Clark, D.D. Calhoun in the lead with 59 percent.